club and the players. So have you had to bring the playing group down again? or? No, not really. No, we, I mean, we, today's our, obviously our main training session. So I think the, uh, the boys around the club are understanding that last week was a big game for us. But, uh, you know, the, the important thing for us now is round three and we've got to make sure we switch back on. And, uh, you know, we've made a real point of moving on quickly after Monday and uh, making sure we're ready to go. North Melbourne have got a good record against you historically. Does that count for anything or you don't really read anything? No, nah, not really. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, the game on Sunday will be totally different to the last time we played them down in Tasmania. So it's, you know, we just have to go there and make sure that we, we bring our absolute best and, uh, you know, we know we're going to play against a high-quality side and we've got to be ready for it. How do you up their running game? Um, do you just try and go head-to-head -head with that or do you try and change things up to, to negate that? No, I think, it, like, look, it's like most weeks, it's about what we need to do ourselves to, uh, to play the way we want to play. And, you know, I'm sure Brad will have his boys doing the same sorts of things. It'll be just a matter of, um, you know, trying to win the battle of getting the game played on the terms that we want it played on, and, and they'll be trying to do the same back to us. So, you know, it's not, it's not so much about what North are, and it's more about what we've got to be. Coming off the showdown, are you worried that the players will be a little bit lethargic, a little bit flat? No, no, I'm, well... I suppose not, I'm not really, but I don't know is, is the simple answer. I, I expect them to come back to work and train and play and uh, be ready to go again on Sunday afternoon. And I'm, you know, every indication that they've given me so far is that they will be. A lot of talk about top four from different sections of the media and the football world this week. And some people are even talking potential grand finals, which is something that you guys haven't really had to deal with. I guess that level of expectation, you feel like the players are ready to deal with that? Oh, we don't even look. We don't even worry about it. We don't talk about those sorts of things as a football club. All last year we did talk about getting what we deserve and we'll, we're, we're going to be the same this year. We, we don't control any of that stuff. This is a 22-week season and at the end of that, whenever, whatever we've done will, will get us to where we've got to be. And uh, you know, we're hopeful that we can be as high as possible, but we don't know what that is. What's your read on North? Are they, like, especially from having seen the Bulldogs game on the weekend, are they different now? Is it going to be a shootout like you perhaps would have expected when you played them at Eddie had last season? Oh, look, I don't think you ever expect a shootout in any game of football. As I said, it's sometimes they, they can play it that way. And, you know, Eddie Had can be a, a bit of a faster track to play football on sometimes. But then, you know, I went and watched their game last week and it was a real lockdown game, a really tight game of football, certainly up to half time against the Bulldogs. And, you know, I'm sure that's, that's the style of football that both sides want to be involved with. It's a hard, contested game of football and then hopefully get the game on your terms later on. Twice you've had um, big leads during the games and you've conceded them and teams have fought back to hit the front. Have you addressed those little patches that have cost you those you know, 10 or 15 minutes of bad footy? Yeah, it's funny. We talk about it all the time, but uh, it's footy. It's what happens, you know. And, you know, before last week, the question was, have we addressed our first quarters and have we addressed our third quarters? But it's just footy. It's just the way it goes, you know. And, and there's momentum and there's three or four goal swings. The game now, more than ever, 30, 40 points up once you used to think you are pretty safe. But... The game now moves so quick, it can be it can be turned around really quickly, and you expect the opposition at this level, at some stage, to play some really good football against you. You're just trying to restrict how long they can do that for. The players feel like that's it's it's not panic stations because they do finish so well. Um, no, I don't think so. I think they understand that the game is tough to play, you know, and have it on your terms for the whole of 120 minutes. They they realise that they have to identify when it's going against them and, and do their absolute best defensively to to make sure the game doesn't get too far away from us. I wouldn't expect you to make any changes to the starting team, but what do you do with the emergency given the Magpies are playing tonight? Uh, we'll just we'll just man manage that the right way, and we'll have a player that'll that'll probably uh, you know have some some restricted game time, but nothing really to be honest. We we don't play till Sunday. Our normal training session is right now, and the Magpies are playing tonight, so there'll be probably you know an extra 30 or 40 minutes for that person to play. They'll play the game tonight, and uh, you know we'll take emergency or, or two emergencies across with us after that. Expectations. The way you guys are playing has been pretty devastating. Is that how well you expected the boys to be playing? Oh, look, I think we expect them to turn up and play a certain style every week, and uh, you know, and compete really hard. And that's what we talk about. You know, our effort and, and how we go about it. And uh, you know, sometimes that gets restricted by the oppo. If we're if we're prepared to stick it to it, stick to our work rate and and put in what we need to, uh, hopefully by the end of the games we're going to be able to come out on top. But that's not going to always be the case. Have you seen Lobie and the backup ruckman working given you going into a game against Goldstein and, and now Curry in that north side? Oh no, look, we're, we're pretty happy with the way our, our ruck system's been working at the moment. You know, we have that flexibility with, uh, with Jacko and Westy as well that can go into the ruck for us and help us out for that, that small amount of time. Goldstein's a big, big minutes ruckman himself and, and Lobes is a big minutes ruckman for us, so I think we'll be okay in that area. What about the back line? There's been a lot of focus on the midfield and the forward line in the first couple of weeks. How have you seen their development and improvement? I guess, oh, it's, 
Look, it's a really, you know, it's, it's a it's a very uh, inexperienced part of our team, but you know they've uh, they know how to play and they play really strong together. And I think they understand more than ever that it's it's the six of them. It's not just one player against one player. It's the it's the six of them together, involved with the other sixteen players in the team that helps them defend really well. But they've stood up, you know, really well so far. But there's lots of challenges ahead of them. Was Bobby coming off just a reaction to Johnson coming off in the showdown, or was it about him not being able to get through hundred? Of game time yet. Oh, no, it was more about where, where Bobby was at and yeah. you know what we wanted to do with him. And we knew with the the heat and everything that was on on Saturday that he was struggling physically to keep going. And uh, you know we certainly made that decision that if they made it a bit easier, I suppose, because they had their tall come off, so it made us feel a little bit safer. But you know it was more about what Bobby's needed to be done and uh, have him ready for this week. What have we seen this for you, Ken? This week, I mean, what are the areas where you see North Melbourne able to do a bit of damage? Oh, they're a high-class side, everyone knows. I mean, everyone's spoken about North Melbourne in, in the pre-season has been a really quality side, and we expect them to, uh, to certainly go up the ladder from where they were last year. But look, it doesn't matter who you play in the comp now. It's just every game's so tight. Every, game, every team's potentially capable of giving some really good football, and we've just got to make sure that you know, North Melbourne, we know that their, their best is devastating. We've just got to try to restrict how much they can get into that, to that mode for, for periods of the game. See, Justin. Sorry. To that first half of North, what, what did you make of that as a, as a coach? I mean, a lot of people were saying it was, was boring footy, but from a coaching perspective, um, it was a pretty good tactical battle. Oh, it was just a, it was a tough, hard game in close and tight, and you know, both coaches, I'm sure, had different, different thoughts that they were trying to achieve, but you know, I, I was there to probably, as much as anything, to see what I, I wanted to see about North Melbourne, their players, and, you know, and, uh, and come away with some ideas on how they're going to play. I do know that they're going to be very hard work. We saw Justin Westhoff taking marks in the back line, taking marks in the forward line, all over the ground. Is he perhaps your most important player because of the amount of roles he can play? Um, it's, it's, it's really hard sometimes to identify one, but West is clearly a significant player for us, but, but then you know, I can probably say so is Jay Schultz and, you know, and, and so is Chad Wingard. And they've all got special parts of their games that we really rely on. And Westy, we rely on his flexibility, there's no doubt about that. But if he's not there, we'd, we'd have to obviously find someone else who would fit into that role and, and play a similar way. Whether they can do it as good as Westy, I don't know. Is he getting to that stage where he's not underrated anymore? Because I think a lot of people underrate him because of his laconic nature. Yeah, he's not underrated at Port Adelaide, that's probably all I can worry about. And uh, we know how valuable he is to our football club. You keen to get Travis off the chain this week? Or are you happy if they're going to target him that he just sort of cops that and does the team things and other guys can step up? I reckon Trav would be happy to be able to get a bit of a run at it to himself, yeah. but uh, oh no, look, he's, he's our captain, he's a high quality player, he expects attention every week and he knows that there's only one way to, to deal with that and that's to work hard and he'll do that.